Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Jocko here doing our grammar lessons for this week. Our next four lessons begin with lesson 121. So grab your simple solution book and a pencil and let's get started. All right, so number one says a pronoun renames an antecedent. Circle the pronoun and draw an arrow to its antecedent. Remember, a pronoun takes the place of a noun. So instead of saying a person's name, you would say he, she, you could say me or I, um, they, um, us, we. Those are all pronouns because they take the place of a name. And then the antecedent is simply the fancy word for the noun we are replacing with a pronoun. So if we look at our sentence, Sherry cleaned the strawberries and put them in the salad, them is circled as our pronoun because it's taking the place of saying the actual noun. And when we say them, what are we talking about? Well, we are talking about the strawberries. Sherry cleaned the strawberries and put the strawberries in the salad is a little repetitive, so we replace strawberries with the pronoun them. On number two, it says to choose all of the prepositions in each sentence. Remember, prepositions can sometimes be tricky to find, so I like to eliminate the other parts of the sentence that I know of, like any nouns or verbs, articles, um, those kinds of words to find what's left. Ralph showed us around the school. Ralph is a proper noun. Showed would be the verb in the sentence, the action word. Us, us is a possessive noun. The is an article. School would be our object noun. So we're left with our preposition, around. Second sentence, our teacher read us a book about space. Our is possessive. Teacher is our subject noun. Red is our verb. Us would also be a possessive um, pronoun. A is an article. Book is a thing, so a noun. And space is um, a noun. So we're left with our preposition about. We stayed awake until midnight at the sleepover. We is a pronoun. Um, stayed and awake, um, these kind of go together for our verbs. Um, midnight is a time, so that's a noun. The is an article. Sleepover is a thing. So we're left with the two prepositions, until and at. Okay, and you could use the help pages in the back of your book if you're having a hard time finding prepositions because there is a chart in the back of your book that lists out all of the prepositions. <clears throat> okay, on number three, use a comma before a coordinating conjunction that connects two complete thoughts. Place the comma in the sentence before the coordinating conjunction. So this is when we have a compound sentence, two sentences put together, and we are joining them with a conjunction we need to put a comma in front of that conjunction to show the separation between the two sentences. So Chloe, Chloe came to the sleepover, but she forgot her sleeping bag. The first part of the sentence is Chloe came to the sleepover. So after that is where we would put a comma. And then the second sentence, but she forgot her sleeping bag. We can decorate the halls or we can play in the gym. The first thought is we can decorate the halls, so we put a comma after that, or would be our conjunction, and then the second thought, we can play in the gym. Number four, underline the future tense verbs, include the helping verb. Remember future means it will happen. It has not happened yet. George will enter only through the back door, will enter. That's what will happen. Uncle Mark will play golf again. Will play is the action of what will happen. Number five, insert commas and quotation marks for the dialogue. 
I can't wait to try the new playground equipment, cried Stella. Remember our quotation marks go around the exact words of our speaker to show what they are saying. And so we put quotation marks around the exact words that Stella is crying out. And we use a comma to separate her exact words from the speaker. So a comma after equipment. The second sentence, Logan replied, my favorite will be the climbing wall. Again, quotation marks go around his exact words, exactly what he is saying. And we put a comma to separate our speaker from their exact words. Over to the next page, number six, we need to draw a line to match the underlined expression with its meaning. Sometimes you just have to go with the flow. Does go with the flow mean got married, worry less and take things as they come? Or does it mean hot, sticky and breezeless days? Going with the flow means to just worry less and kind of take things as they come. It was only June, but the dog days of summer had already arrived. Dog days of summer means those really hot, sticky and breezeless days almost unbearable to go outside in those kind of days. After Sissy and Steve had tied the knot, they moved next door to us. When someone has tied the knot, it means they got married. So maybe you have heard some of those expressions before, and if not, now you can use them. Number seven, choose the word that means the same as the underlined words. This is not an emergency, so you don't need to call an ambulance. So if it is not an emergency, our word that means the same should have our main word in it, which is emergency. So we have non-direct, non-emergency, or non-profit. Well, I know non means not, and emergency is our root word. So we could say this is a non-emergency, so you don't need to call an ambulance. Number eight, write a possessive pronoun that agrees with the underlying nouns. Possessive means it's showing ownership, and a pronoun, remember, takes the place of a noun. It takes the place of saying somebody's actual name. So Kelly and Nicole put blank drawings on the table. So instead of saying Kelly and Nicole put Kelly and Nicole's drawings on the table, in order to talk about both Kelly and Nicole, we could use the pronoun there because the drawings are theirs. It belongs to them. On number nine, we need to choose the word that means to find out and use it in a sentence. Determine, include, or illustrate. Well, to find something out is to determine it. Mom will determine the best route to take, okay? So they use that word in a sentence. You could come up with your own sentence um, and you can use it in the past, present, or future tense. I might say, I am determined, if I could spell it right, there we go. I am determined to do well on my test. So that could be an example sentence. I am determined to do well on my test. Okay. And lastly, number 10, read the words and think about shades of meaning. Put a star next to the stronger statement. So dad thought I would soon need a raise in my allowance or dad knew I would soon need a raise in my allowance. Well, knowing something is more powerful than just thinking it. So dad knew I needed a raise. That sentence shows a stronger shade of meaning with the action verb, okay? So boys and girls, that ends lesson 121. If you're hanging out with me for the next lesson, go ahead and turn the page. Otherwise, if you are just tuning in for today's grammar lesson, we are on lesson 122. All right, 
Let's continue then. Lesson 122. A coordinating conjunction can connect two complete thoughts in a sentence. For example, do your homework so we can play outside. So there's two thoughts, do your homework, we can play outside. So we need to use a coordinating conjunction to complete the sentence. So let's take a look at the first one. The beluga whale is 14 feet long, but the blue whale is 100 feet long. We would use the conjunction but because we're comparing one beluga whale and then we're giving a fact about another and how they are different. You could probably also say the beluga whale is 14 feet long and the blue whale is 100 feet long. I think that would work too as your coordinating conjunction, but um, the better choice would be but. Okay, either Mindy will get a puppy or she will get a kitten. So this one has to be or because both are not happening um, because we have this clue word either. Either means one or the other. And so either and or are those two kind of two words that kind of go together. Um, so we wouldn't say M Mindy is getting a puppy and she will get a kitten. Both are not happening. All right, number two, remember conjunctions connect. All right, we were just talking about them. Underline the conjunction. African elephants are huge, but they can run at a speed of 25 miles per hour. But would be our conjunction because it's joining two complete sentences together. African elephants are huge. They can run at a speed of 25 miles per hour. So joining those two sentences is the conjunction but. Number three, fill in the plural possessive noun. Plural means more than one of something, and possessive means there's ownership. Something belongs to someone. My dad won the men's division of the golf tournament. Notice men is already plural. Man is singular. Men is more than one man. So in this case, in order to show that it is a plural possessive, we simply add an apostrophe S. That's kind of tricky because usually when we're doing a plural possessive, we put an S and then the apostrophe. But because this is an irregular plural and we change man to men, we then just put an apostrophe S to show ownership, the men's division. Um, so it's the division that belongs to all of the men. Okay, number four, choose the word that means the same um, as to draw a picture and use it in a sentence. Determine, include, or illustrate. Illustrate, we should know, is the same as drawing a picture because when we are looking at picture books, the illustrator is the person who um, drew the pictures. So their example sentence, I still need to illustrate my book, okay? So you could come up with your own sentence using the word illustrate. How about, I want to illustrate children's books someday. So that could be another sentence. You could even um, use the word illustrator because that is still a form of illustrate. It just means the person who illustrates the pictures. Number five, we need to add one of these suffixes onto the root word of beauty and spell the new word. So would we say beautiful, beautiness, or beautiest? I'm sure we've seen this Common word before, B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L. So beautiful, we're gonna add the suffix F-U-L, but notice how I had to drop the Y on beauty, and we change that Y to an I before we add the suffix full, okay? 
over to the next page, number six. It says to circle the noun that is the subject of the sentence and underline the noun that is the object. Well, remember a noun is a person, a place, or a thing. Jolie bakes chocolate cakes. Subject tells us who our sentence is about. So who is this about? Well, it's about Julie. So Julie would be our subject now. And bakes is a verb. Chocolate is an adjective describing the cakes. So our object noun would be cakes because it comes in the predicate part of our sentence and cakes are a thing. Okay, number seven, underline the future tense verbs. So the actions that are going to happen in the future. Nathan will earn some money at this job. What will Nathan do? He will earn. The fence will keep the dog out of the garden. What will the fence do? It will keep. Those are our future tense verbs. On number eight, choose the words that match the underlined word. Now I've noticed some of us are not choosing all of the words on these sentences. We need to look at this carefully. It says choose the words so there is more than one answer. Doctors were concerned about the disease spreading to more cities. Oh, we should have a lot of experience with the word disease, being that it's been on every news channel lately and we're dealing with our own disease right now, spreading to more and more cities. So what's the, um, what are some other words for disease? I think you should know sickness and illness, okay? And hopefully this disease will be over very soon. Number nine, read the meaning of the expression. Rewrite the sentence using the expression. So this is kind of new. Eat your words. Sounds kind of silly to say eat your words. But remember, these expressions don't literally mean exactly what they say. In this case, eat your words means to take back something you said. It's like when you say something and you wish you could rewind and take it back. So the weather forecast was wrong, so the weatherman had to take back what he said. So instead of saying take back what he had said, we're going to uh, fill in eat your words. So you can see... The new sentence, the weather forecast was wrong, so the weatherman had to eat his words. So he had to take back what he said because he was wrong in his prediction of the weather. So that's kind of a silly thing to say. Number 10, some adverbs compare verbs by adding er to the end of the adverb. Mary walks fast, but if we're comparing her to her granddaughter, granddaughter, she walks faster than her granddaughter. Sandy plays harder in the second half. Harder is the adverb telling us how Sandy plays. So remember, adverbs describe the action in the sentence, and in this case, it's comparing how she played probably in the first half to how she is now playing in the second half. All right, friends, so that ends lesson 122. Lesson 123 is next. So if you're hanging out with me a little bit longer, we are already halfway done with our grammar for the week. Two more lessons to go, starting with right now, lesson 123. One, two, three. Here we go, guys. All right. Read the words. Draw a line to separate each word into syllables between the long vowel and the consonant. So, motive. Motive is like your reason for doing something. Motive. You hear the long O, so we're going to split the syllables there. Acorn. We hear the long A sound, so we split the syllable after the A. Item, item. Hear the long I, so we're going to split after the I. 
legal, legal. We hear the long E, so we split after that. Number two, write a possessive pronoun that takes the place um, or that agrees with the underlined word. So remember, possessive shows ownership and a pronoun takes the place of somebody's name. The bee's hive is in the tree. So it's the bee's hive we're talking about. The hive is blank home. It is their home. When we're saying their, we're talking about the bees. Their would be our possessive pronoun. On number three, the Greek word bio means life. So when you see a word with bio in it, the word probably has something to do with life. So we have biology and biography. And you should know from um, writing and even in reading class, a biography is the story of someone's life. And an autobiography would be a story of your own life that you write. So then biology is the study of life. So there are some people who are biologists and it is their job to study different life forms, different creatures. Number four, choose the correct form of the verb. Use the verb take. Okay, so this verb will change depending on if it's the past, present, or future tense. Nora blank the container to the recycling center. Nora takes the container to the recycling center. Nora takes the container. That could work, but they put it in the past tense. Nora took the container to the recycling center. Carson takes swimming lessons at the park, or you could even say past tense, Carson took swimming lessons at the park if he already did it. You could even say Carson will take swimming lessons at the park, and that would make it future tense. Or even for the first sentence, Nora will take the container to the recycling center. And number five, what does the underlined word mean? So I could tell Anna wasn't feeling well because she just nibbled her food. So some clue words here, if um, she wasn't feeling well, um, it doesn't mean gulped because it's her food. So you don't really gulp your food, you would gulp a drink. Um, and through, I guess if she wasn't feeling well, she could have, you know, thrown her food because she didn't want to eat it. But the best choice here is that she took tiny bites. When you nibble on something, you just kind of take teeny tiny little bites. And sometimes you might do that if you really don't have an appetite because you don't feel well. Okay, over to the next page. We need to write the meaning of the underlined word. Our word is writer. A writer enjoys quiet time. So what is a writer? If you look at the suffix here, er means someone who does. So it's someone who writes. That's what a writer is, someone who writes. Okay, number seven, choose the word that means to take something in, to take something in. Determine, include, or illustrate. Well, we've already used two of the words, so include is the last one. When you include someone in a game, it means you're taking them in to play with you. So their sentence said, we can include our cousin in the conversation. So you can come up with your own sentence. I might say, I will include the new student to play with us at recess. Okay, I will include the new student to play with us at recess. All right, it's a little big, trying hard to squeeze it down. <laughs> All right, number eight, choose the word that completes the sentence. Edge, exciting, or problem. The weekend in New York was an exciting time for the women. Yeah, it means it would, was fun. Number nine, choose the words that match the underlined word in the sentence. So imitate those who are good, says my aunt. Well, we're choosing the words, which means more than one. 
more than one answer. Imitate those who are good. That means copy those who are good and to act like those who are good. When you copy or act like someone, you are imitating them. And number 10, choose the best coordinating conjunction to complete each sentence. We got up early to walk on the beach and I found a sand dollar. Gina or Ginny wanted to ride in a hot air balloon, but it was too windy to take off. So those two conjunctions fit best in those sentences. All right, friends, one more lesson left to go. That would be lesson 124. So if you've been hanging with me for all three lessons so far and you're getting it all done at once, congratulations, this is our last lesson. And if you're just tuning in to finish up for the week, congratulations to you too, last lesson for grammar. All right, here we go, lesson 124. The pronoun must agree with the antecedent. Choose the correct pronoun. The phone rang and Sue answered. Well, if we're talking about the phone, what did she answer? Well, she answered it. Them is a plural pronoun, but we only have one phone. If it said the phones rang and Sue answered them, that would work. But in this sentence, the phone rang and Sue answered it. All right, use a future tense verb to complete each sentence. They blank us if we are nice to them. Will row us, will ask us, or will help us. I think if you're nice to someone, they will help you. Carson, blank a question at the end of class. Carson will ask a question. And Sophie, blank to shore if the sail doesn't work. Well, she will have to row. Number three, underline two action verbs. So we should have two verbs underlined in this sentence. When you yell at me, I cry. Remember, verb is an action word. So yell is an action someone might do. And cry is an action of something you might do. So yell and cry. Okay, number four, choose the word that means to look at something ahead of time and use it in a sentence. Preview, assemble, or compare. Well, ahead of time, that means like before, and I know pre means before, so preview. And their sentence is, I watched a preview of the new fall television shows. So a preview, um, I always think of movies because they often have previews at the beginning of them. The preview was for a funny movie coming out soon. So that could be an example sentence. See if you can come up with your own sentence using the word preview. And we'll move on to number five. Fill in the plural possessive noun. Plural possessive. Plural is more than one. Possessive means it shows ownership. The boys' coats were all black. So we have boys as our plural. And then notice the apostrophe has to go after the S because it's all of the boys' coats that were black. Number six, underline the adverb that tells when. Adverbs describe the action, and in this sentence, it's going to tell us when the action is happening. The dog walks daily. When does the dog walk? Daily. So that is our um, adverb. Okay, over to number seven. Choose all the prepositions in each sentence. Use the help pages to check your work. I, you know me, I like to cross off all of the other words in the sentence that I can eliminate and see if I can narrow down to my preposition. So Maya received a letter from the president. Maya is a proper noun naming a person. Received is the verb. A is an article. Letter is a noun. The is an article, 
president is a noun, so we're left with from. That is our preposition. Rudy rode his bike up the hill past our lemonade stand. Rudy is a proper noun. Rode is the verb. His is a possessive pronoun. Bike is a noun. The is an article. Hill is a noun. Our is a possessive pronoun. Lemonade is an adjective describing what kind of stand. So stand is a thing. So we're left with up and pass. Hopefully that trick is kind of helping you guys out with finding the prepositions in the sentences. All right, on number eight, we are using a subordinating conjunction to expand a sentence. This makes the sentence more interesting or adds additional information. For example, pack your bag since you have gymnastics class after school. So it just kind of connects two thoughts in the sentence, pack your bag, you have gymnastics class after school, two different things are kind of going on and that coordinating, subordinating conjunction kind of joins those together. So you needed to choose the best one for these sentences below. We have outdoor recess, blank it is raining. We have outdoor recess since it is raining, that one makes sense. We have outdoor recess unless it is raining. I have to bring a written note since I was absent yesterday. Since is another uh, word similar to because. All right, on number nine, choose the word to complete the sentence, write it on the line, and circle the vowel consonant vowel pattern. Palm trees can grow in a tropical fever, broken, or climate. Well, climate has to do with weather, so we're going to choose climate. And we want to circle the vowel, consonant vowel pattern. So that would be the I, M, A. Because I is a vowel, M is a consonant, and A is another vowel. And finally, to finish up for the week, fill in the blank with the word that fits the meaning of the sentence. The blank girl kept all the money from the group's lemonade stand. If someone kept all the money, would they be kind? Certainly not. Greedy? Yeah. And I don't think that would be very funny either. So we could say the greedy girl kept all the money from the group's lemonade stand. All right, boys and girls, as always, it is a pleasure to be here to go over our grammar lessons with you for the week. I hope that you are finding them very helpful and useful as you are working from home. We still have a few weeks left, so I will be back next week with some more grammar lessons for us all. In the meantime, take care and best of luck with getting your schoolwork done. Bye.